Okay, today we are covering or starting our unit on um, conic sections. In our book it's chapter 10. So today we're going to have an overview of the conic sections. It's called Exploring Conic Sections. So um, to help you remember, hopefully, a conic or conic section is a curve that you get by intersecting a plane and a double cone. So this is our double cone. There's a cone on top of a cone. By changing the inclination of the plane you get four basic shapes. So this first one, um, that plane is supposed to be parallel to the base of the cone. I hope you can see that that shape is a circle. Then if we slice it this way we have a parabola. If we tilt it even uh, differently again then we have something called an ellipse and then the last one is called a hyperbola. Now today I'm only going into those uh, into each of these we're just doing an overview okay and we're gonna sketch the graphs. Later on okay each of these will be covered in more detail so this is 10.1, parabolas will be covered in 10.2, circles will be covered in 10.3, ellipses will be in 10.4, hyperbolas in 10.5, and then 10.6 we actually shift them around. Okay, so overview of our chapter. Now to start off with, we're going to look at it says what is the graph of x squared plus y squared equals 9, what are the lines of symmetry, and what are the domain and range. Okay, so to start off, all I want you to do in this section is to look at the intercepts of the graph. We've talked about that a lot this year. So first, if I plug in 0 for x, that term goes away. y squared equals 9, so y equals plus or minus 3. Then, if I take that and now I plug in 0 for y, I found out that x equals plus or minus 3. So these are my intercepts, and I'm going to go plot them. So I have negative 3 and positive 3 on both axes. And if we continued to plot points, hopefully you can see that we would come up with the graph of a circle. So something of that sort, okay? Most importantly, when you graph any of these, there are they're all curves, so you should not see any kind of sharp edges or straight lines while you're graphing these. Okay, so this is a circle. Okay, and pay attention to that equation, and we'll talk about that um, some more as we move along. Okay, lines of symmetry. All right, um, as you look through this. All right, the lines of symmetry, remember that means I can fold it along that line and the graph would match up exactly. So yes, we have the y-axis, which is x equals 0. We have the x-axis, which is y equals 0. But my students had no trouble figuring out that any of these lines, okay, if I drew a horizontal line up here, it's not symmetric, or if I draw one here, it's not symmetric. But any other line containing the center of our circle. So it is all lines containing the center, which in this case is 0, 0. Okay? And our domain, remember that domain refers to the x, so we're going farthest to the left, farthest to the right, so we go from negative 3 to 3 with brackets, because it includes that point. And up and down, farthest down is negative 3, and farthest highest up, highest and lowest point, negative 3 and positive 3. Okay? That's our circle. Look at the next one. Okay? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go find our intercepts. So, again, put in 0 for x, and we find out that y is going to be plus or minus the square root of 18. So, yes, you need your calculator. Punch that in your calculator and you find out that's plus or minus 4.2. So we can graph those. And I just want you to estimate, y'all. It's a sketch. We're not going to get that exact right now. Okay, and then if I take that and I cover up my y, okay, then I'm going to have two, sorry about that. I have 
2y squared equals 18, so y squared equals 9, and so I think y'all know y equals plus or minus 3. So when x, uh, oh my bad y'all, that was all supposed to be x's, let me go fix that. Okay, that was 2x squared equals 18, x squared equals 9, and x equals plus or minus 3. Alright, because I covered up the y. So, x intercepts plus or minus 3, 0. So we plot those. Plus or minus 3, plus or minus 3. And I'm going to go attempt to draw one of those. So, again, if you continue to plot those points, okay, then you would see that it is, I think it's going to be something, let's see if this works. That looks pretty good. Okay, looks like an oval, but it is an ellipse. That's what we say in math. Okay. What kind of lines of symmetry do we have here? It may be a little bit harder to see because my lips is pretty close to a circle. But if I had a, a skinnier lips looking something like this, you could see. And if I um, tried to draw my x-axis and a y-axis, you can see if I draw it here, yes, they match on the top and bottom. If I draw it here, they match left and right. But when you try to draw one like this, um, that was not a good one. Let's try again. If I draw a line through here, <laughs> through the origin, it's not going to fold and match up. So the only lines of symmetry we have are x equals 0 and y equals 0. Okay? Domain, farthest left, negative 3. Farthest right is positive 3. Range, lowest point is negative 4.2. Highest point is 4.2. Okay, and this, as we just said, is our ellipse. And this is the equation. Okay. So, um, all right, so the next one we have is this equation. And we're going to do the same thing. So I have um, intercepts. All right, so I'm going to go plug in 0 for x. And when I plug in 0 for x, you have negative y squared equals 16. So you would solve that by dividing by negative 1 or multiplying by negative 1, however you want to think about it. You get y squared equals negative 16. Well, that is an imaginary number. And so we have no y, I didn't write that correctly, no y-intercepts. Okay. And then if I take this and cover up my y because I'm putting in 0, then this goes away. And my x intercepts, x squared equals 16. So x equals plus or minus 4, 0. So I'm going to go plot this point, negative 4, 0. Okay. Now, to assist your drawing, okay, we have no y intercepts because y squared can't be negative 16 and graph it on our real coordinate plane. But if you ignore the negative sign, y squared equals 16, then y would intersect at 4. So you can put a little x here and x here because that's where it would intersect. Because how we're going to draw these later on, okay, is you draw a box, you make a box using these points. Okay, for some reason I can't um, draw straight right now. So I'm going to draw my box through here, and it's dotted because it is only part of the, it's helping us draw the graph. Then you draw diagonals through the box, extending out the corners of the box. And the reason you do that, then go back to your intercepts, which are these points right here, and draw curves, making them approach your asymptotes. And that is how you draw a parabola. So you kind of already got that part down. Okay? Our lines of symmetry. Uh, you can pause and think about it and come back, and hopefully you got the right answer. They are, again, x equals 0 and y equals 0, our x and y axis, okay? Our domain, 
Oh, changed a little bit because our point farthest to the left, these go on forever and ever. So again, my students were just great in saying that's negative infinity to negative four. Includes that point, it's a bracket. They know this symbol well now that we've covered probability, that's or. And then it picks back up at four and goes to positive infinity because these arrows continue out that way. And our range, they could see this is going to go down forever and ever and going up forever and ever. So they had no problem with negative infinity to infinity. So before I move on, let me see if I can get both these equations on the same thing. Oh, and I didn't write that this was your hyperbola. Hyperbola. Okay, so what I want to do and just kind of point out and just show you so that it just will help you. Uh, let's see if I can get all this down here. Okay, so the one that we had on the page before was the circle, okay, and its equation was x squared plus y squared equal to 9. So notice that these three equations, circle of hyperbola, both, if you look at what they have in common, they both have both variables squared, okay, x squared plus y squared. Um, and then these two have something in common that this one does not in that these are both plus and this is minus. So when you have both variables squared and one is minus, right now you will know that's hyperbola. Now what's the difference between these two? Okay, the difference here is that has a 2 and that has a 1. This has a 1 and this has a 1. So yes, the numbers in front of the variables for a circle, which are called the coefficients, will be the same if it's a circle because you have to go out the same distance in all directions for a circle. So again, brief overview. Let's talk about the last thing you got to do, which is to identify graphs. So um, what is this? Okay, it is, those are the branches of a hyperbola. The center is at 0, 0. The intercepts are plus or minus 4. Nope, that's not 4. That is 2. Plus or minus 2, 0. Your, uh, what else do we have to do? Domain and range. Domain, okay, goes all the way to negative infinity to negative 2, includes it, or picks up at positive 2 to infinity. The range is negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, look at the second one. It is an ellipse. Okay, so we have our ellipse. Again, center is 0, 0. Uh, intercepts. It goes out to 6 because this is that's 4 and that's 8. And halfway there is going to be 6. So we have plus or minus 6, 0. And this is 2, making that 4. So that's 0 plus or minus 4. My domain is x. So it goes from negative 6 to positive 6. The range goes from negative 4 to positive 4. Okay, and last but not least, we have uh, another hyperbola. So it's good to know that it can look like either one of these. Again, our center is at 0, 0. We only have one set of intercepts that are on the y-axis. So my y-intercept is 0 plus or minus 1. And my domain, okay, this time farthest left and farthest right, that's infinity to negative, whatever, negative infinity to positive infinity. And my range this time goes from negative infinity up to negative 1, includes it, and then starts at 1 and goes to positive infinity. So that is an overview of our conic, section, conic sections. As I said at the beginning, we will learn more about each of those. Um, we will learn about each of those in more detail as we progress through the chapter. Please let me know if you have any questions.